Hello, all. Uh, welcome again to the Foolish Tech Show, um, our Tuesday 10 o'clock show. That's what today is. And I'm your host, Michael. Um, I have with me here Tank and another camera I hope to use to show off um, some of the things I'm going to be talking about today. Oh, and we also have Brantley joining us now. Um, Johnny won't be here today. She's in Florida visiting her sister who just recently had a beautiful baby boy named Noah. It's a good solid healthy 8 pounds and 22 inches. So um, we all here at Foolish IT and uh, hopefully all of you um, followers out there uh, wish her uh, the best her and her sister and she is a twin by the way so you can imagine what her sister looks like um, no you can't well not really yeah they're completely different actually but um, but anyway uh, I was uh, very happy to to see our team uh, and our team's family grow a little bit more um, so today uh, not really as usual I'm unprepared which is um, probably gonna that is usual find uh, to be quite the norm for the uh, the show oh. but I did wanted to go over at least briefly today uh, a little bit more on open elect my preferred um, Linux what? embedded entertainment center why why did you start so early uh, it was just ten yeah it was just a couple of minutes um, I, I was hi just... welcome to today's show Anyway, I already did. If you, if you just joined us two minutes ago, or you know, if you just joined us and missed the first two minutes, then please uh, welcome everyone to the Foolish Tech Show. This is our Tuesday edition at 10 a.m. You can watch us uh, online at foolishit.com/live, and you can also chat with us there through um, IRC. Um, oh, speaking of that, let me open up my IRC clients. There we go. Um, oh, and we already have a visitor. Counter 01. Oh. No, that's Proctor. Oh. Okay. Well, anyway, um, hopefully we will get some visitors <laughs> as the day progresses. Um, but I did want to go over a little bit about OpenELEC. Uh, I didn't get to really show you some of the um, advantages of it. And as it turns out, I just got a new um, uh, MSATA drive, which I hope will fit. I just doing some research. I don't, maybe I bought the wrong thing. I'm not sure. But at any rate, uh, I'm going to see if I can install that and get Open Elec up and running. And then I'm going to use my cell phone camera to give you a brief overview of how quickly it boots and what you can expect on a larger screen. Um, so at least uh, do that. And then maybe we could also uh, uh, talk about um, work stuff, uh, tickets, and stuff that's going on around here. For the last part, um, and of course, those things take priority. So, if anybody pops in and has a question and would like it answered, please just feel free to type it in there. And at foolishit.com um, foolishit slash live uh, in the IRC channel there, and uh, I will be happy to address that and uh, you know interrupt the show if necessary. Um, we consider our users a um, priority of our software, you know, D72 and uh, all of our other. Uh, D software um, out there. So, also looks like did we get another join um, video wise? Is that Nick? It's Proctor. Oh, Proctor. Do I not have video? Uh, I'm you're not. In you're in the dark. Yeah. Turn on the light. That might help. No, I think it's the um, camera software that Brantley was the y'all cam. Uh, uh, yeah. If you're if you're using that camera to. Uh, as your security thing, it's being used. So you have to turn off y'all cam. Hmm. Um. So uh, just to refresh your memories, guys out there, I'm going to just post uh, the link to open a lack again. Um, they noticed that they have a box. We talked about this a bit the other day, but we, they have a box that's 90 euros uh, on the front page there. Um, but what I've found is, uh, you know, for, for 100 U.S., 
or um, even potential, yeah, right around 100 US, you can build a box that's at least as powerful, if not more powerful, uh, than what they have up there. The advantage to theirs, though, is that it comes with a remote, and uh, it's you know it's 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 professionally built. It's uh, it's preloaded with the software, and it's guaranteed to work. Um, so uh, there's those pluses, but you do pay a um, cost premium to uh, to get that. So I'm not going that route. I figure like a lot of you out there, you just want to repurpose something that you currently have. And um, I actually didn't completely repurpose something. I bought a, um, a mini PC. I wanted to use it for a bunch of different purposes, but this turned out to be more um, a little bit more fun than some of the other uses I had of it. Of course, Bradley would argue that PF Sense is probably the better way to go with my box, and I think I might do that at one point to show you guys how that works. Um, but as he mentioned on a previous show, it's a little bit complicated to get up and running, and we may want to actually go with something a little bit more straightforward, like Untangle, or I believe he mentioned. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is pick up kind of where I left off before um, with OpenELEC, and I'm going to actually download the image and create a bootable flash drive with it. Um, I'll see if I guess I could share this screen here. Um, 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 um. Uh, so again, back here, I'm going to say I haven't tried out the... Uh, I haven't tried out those newest bills yet. Um, I'm using 508 on my box, but I'm interested to see what the fifth beta of uh, version 6 of OpenELEC is going to look like. So I'm going to see if I can um, get this disk image. And I downloaded this the other day, I'm pretty sure, but I deleted it. So I'm going to get that downloaded, which is 157 megs. Uh, should not take very long for anyone out there. And I've already got a uh, flash drive plugged in. Uh, in this case, I believe it's a, a 512 meg flash drive, pretty old one. Um, but any flash drive will do, given the size being so small. Um, well, of course, not a 64 meg one, but um, uh, or 128, but <coughs> a megabyte one. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think they make flash drives that small anymore. <clears throat> And as I mentioned to you in the last time, their site isn't the fastest, so even the um, glad the file is only 157 megs. If it was any larger, it would take an eternity. And but this is why you know it's it's basically done on donations and love. Uh, so if you um, love it like I do, I would recommend you know uh, generally uh, donating to them so that maybe they can improve their bandwidth. Um, Gonna extract this. That's fine. Oh, did I already have it there? <laughs> yeah, I already did. Okay. So uh, now that we have that image, I'm going to run a program that Brantley mentioned to us the other day, um, and I probably mentioned as well. It's um, where is it? Win32 Disk Imager. So I'm gonna launch Win32 Disk Imager. I'm going to give you the web page to that too. Uh, what is the link to that? SourceForge, right? Mm -hmm. So, 132 Disk Imager can be gotten here, folks, for writing IMG files to flash drives. Very convenient, very easy if you are in Windows like I am. Um, anyway, let's see. When that loads up, let's see if I can get a screen share of that as well. Oh, I'm so uncoordinated. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing that, and then I'm going to share my other window. Where is it? 132 disk image here. So this is one thirty disk imager, very easy. You just select the flash drive that you currently have. It does it by drive letters. I currently am confirming that I have the uh, correct one in there. This actually has my old uh, 508 version on it currently, but I'm going to overwrite it. I'm going to browse conveniently to um, my OpenELEC image here. And then I'm going to... Then I'm going to hit the, uh, and I got the device, of course, selected. That's my correct one. I've confirmed that. Um, and then I'm just going to hit the right. 
And yes, I'm sure I want to continue. It also confirms with the volume label that was on there previously. So it doesn't take very long. Obviously, it'll go faster depending upon the speed of the flash drive you're using. But um, mine's an ancient old drive. I surprised actually it hasn't completely failed on me just yet. It's been written to so much over the years, and it's probably it's probably damn near ten years old. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, don't you love progress bars? But anyway, so now that we have that successfully created, I'm just going to go ahead and get out of that. Um, and I'm going to take my drive out, and I'm going to move over and see if we can get it to boot up on my other computer, and I'll see if I can get you some screenshots of that uh, as well. So, uh, just bear with me, folks. If Brantley, you want to keep them chatting while I go get this set up. Um, I've already got the camera prepped, so this shouldn't take too long, but please keep them occupied. Okay. Um, dang, where did my thing go? I had a... Uh... Hey, morning, Phoenix PC Repair. How are you doing today? So I had to do a BIOS update this morning, and I just want to read off the instructions for that BIOS update because I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, step one, prepare an MS-DOS bootable USB flash drive. Step two, download the zip file. And this is the BIOS update zip file. Step three, unzip the file and copy to the USB flash drive. I just extracted straight to the USB flash drive, so... Uh, step four, reboot the PC into MS-DOS mode and run star.bat command in the command prompt. Did that. Step five, and this is where I, I really enjoyed this. Step five is wait in suspense until the update is finished. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> <laughs> that is creepy, folks. That is a little bit creepy, I must like, say. Do I really want to update now? Mm. <laughs> Luckily, I did not read all the steps before starting the process, so <laughs> I got to five, and I was like, "Wait, oh man, they got me! I'm I'm going to have to now." <laughs> so, thought that was a pretty good uh, bias flash step instruction thing there. Um, I'm glad they're confident in their new bios. <laughs> that's, that's what I was like, man. That did not make me feel very confident. And that's why I was like, I'm glad I didn't read them beforehand, because I might have second-guessed myself. Um, has it, have you ever had a bios flash fail? Oh, yeah. Um, one of the ones I can remember, I was actually... Um, embedding a Your Way Computing logo into the BIOS, and it didn't go as planned, and, um, I mean, it, it trashed the BIOS. It wouldn't, the system wouldn't, boot, wouldn't post. All right, well, now that's different. That's trying to install kind of a custom BIOS, and I can see bricking something like that, but what about just a standard BIOS? Have you ever had just a standard BIOS fail? I, I don't recall... I don't believe I have. So, like, I understand why it's so worrisome, but yeah, I don't. I've never had a BIOS flash fail that was detrimental. Like, I've had a couple BIOS flash fails with uh, with the like router flashing, like putting DDWRT and stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had a couple of those fail, but. Yeah, me too. The ones that I did it on, I made sure it had like a factory reset section. So like the the routers that I have, like you could hold down the reset button and plug in power, and it booted up to like a, a HTTP flashing. So like it's just a fat flash, the factory default. So I, I really haven't had an issue with that. Can uh, can I just interrupt here, guys? I just wanted to show you a little bit of the size. So that right down there is the top of it where my 2.5-inch 
hard drive was plugged into. And of course, as you guys know, what two and a half hard drive is, I'm sure, um, you can kind of get a feel for the size of my whole little box there. Um, you're basically that big chip on the left is the RAM, the wireless cards uh, to the right of that chip. Um, and the CPU is actually on the reverse side of the board, so I really can't show you that. Uh, but I've also got a um, MSATA slot in there, which I am going to, I don't know if you can make that out, but uh, I'm going to stick a drive in there. So if you guys can bear with me. Do you know uh, what that board is? Um, no, it came as part of that uh, mini PC case that I got. Um, it's obviously... Look on, the, look on the board, there should be a model number on it. Yeah, I yeah. Um, there is not um, at least nowhere that I can see. Because um, it looks like you got the the same one that I got for my uh, internet gateway setup. Well, the thing that I like, I, oh, it might be, um, the thing I actually like about this is, I don't know if you can make it out, but it's got, uh, um, it's got two Ethernet ports, so that makes it perfect for one of those types of boxes. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I think, yeah, and you said yours was a Jetway, right? A Jetway, I believe, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same one. Except I didn't get the one that has the hard drive caddy. I got the one that just has the MSATA. It has an SATA slot on there that I could hook up an SATA. Yeah, the, drive, the, 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 yeah, well, that's all I did. I mean, so what you see down here is just the top of it. And um, the... Yeah, I, uh, don't, I, don't have that, I don't have that case, that part, the... Oh, it did that, come with it. It came that yeah. that so those little four screws, that bracket, and um, the mounting mechanism there, that came with mine. So um, yeah, you got a different version one. Hmm, Yours interesting. Is, I think actually the the lower version. Interesting. So um, same same board though. I highly. Uh, oh, you know. Uh, be aware, you will not be able to install Untangle. X64 at least on there. I haven't tested out the 32 one. Why? Why? Uh, it won't recognize any USB keyboard and mouse once it gets past the installation. So like the installation works, everything's fine. But once you get into the actual setup part, like once it reaches <coughs> and installed the hard drive, it won't detect mm -hmm. the USB keyboard or mouse. Hmm. Well, I'll uh, I'll give it a swing too and see if uh, I have the same experience or not. But I'm, it's interesting. Does, I hope. Does your board have uh, dual HDMI? Dual HDMI? No, just yeah. one HDMI. Okay, yeah. So you got the one that's lower than mine. mine no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Actually, um, I take that back. Mine, um, mine only has a DVI. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mine has dual HDMI. Ah, okay. So yeah, slightly different, uh, different version there. Um, e okay, so let me see. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this. I gotta put it in my mouth. The 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 flashlight in my mouth. So there we go. I'm gonna say, why are you doing this in the dark? Uh, I don't have very many lights in my house. Um. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is horrible. Mm -hmm. My Michael's allergic to light, especially sunlight. <laughs> yeah. Yes, folks. You heard it here first. Oh, God, that screw is in there tight. And it's about 10 a.m., so the sun should be up and shining. Mm. Michael didn't realize the the other privacy location thing I just dropped there. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Good God, they screwed the screw in tight as balls. That's not going to come out. This The screw to hold in the uh, MSATA? It's it's lefty, Lucy, not righty tighty. I, 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 I know, man, I know. Let's see what I can here. My hands are sweaty.
Well, I wanted to un install Untangle just because it was it's so easy, so simple. It has the ad blocking stuff that I would want, and I think it would make it just as easy to connect to my VPN service so that everything on my network is going through the VPN service. But since I ran into those issues with it not recognizing USB mouse or keyboard and all that box has on it is USB slots, you know, PS2 slots. Um, I couldn't do that. But as I was watching the Untangle thing, because I installed it a couple times, I was noticing that all the packages are the same packages that you can get in PFSense. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the biggest thing is just going through and you actually have to manually configure everything and do all that. So I guess I'm settling for that. Dang, having to learn. Um, but that does mean that I could probably make it a whole lot better if I put the time and effort into it. <clears throat> Um, I did also try out the Clear OS. Um, it's another internet gateway that is an open source community edition. And so first, I, I kind of want to go through the three. So Untangle, the install, and setup and configuration are extremely simple. The PFSense, the install, is actually extremely simple. It's the setup and configuration that's a little bit more advanced. The Clear OS, it made everything really nice and gooey during the install, but I did have some trouble just picking things out. Granted, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but uh, there were some things with the network setup that kind of threw me for a loop there, so um, I'm probably going to go back and try installing it and setting it up again and playing around with it some more, probably in a virtual machine first to play around with it. But um, it does look a whole lot nicer. So I didn't get past the install part. Um, so I kind of just gave up and switched to something else. But the uh, install part was fairly simple but gave you some options. So it's kind of a little bit nicer than... Untangle, but almost just as easy as Untangle. And I didn't get into the configuration, so I'm not sure how that was. But they, everything I saw on their website made it seem like it's a really easy to do setup and stuff. So, but they don't include things like the ad blocker, which you have to use a content filter and get list for it. And I didn't feel like doing that. If I'm going to do that, I might as well just use PFSense because you have to go through all the configuration for all that stuff. Hey, Nick joined us. How you doing, Nick? Uh, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, fellas. Uh, tell, tell Jada I said happy birthday if she actually has Thank her. you. What's her birthday today? Well, happy birthday, Jay. Awesome. It is. I'll let her know. Let her know. She's down there doing some slave labor at the moment. <laughs> I just got back from breakfast with my mom, who's leaving town. So this morning she just left from there for breakfast, and then we came back here. Cool. <sighs> from her visit. So to see my son's on his birthday last week, just so we're all on the same page, which is why my dad was here. Well, no, my dad was here for the Oyster Festival, but um, anyway. Hey, it looks like Undertaker and Futures have joined. Morning, y'all. Hey, Welcome. Good morning. Howdy, Thank into Phoenix. Morning. And oh, man, Martin was here yesterday. I don't know why. He's not here now. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he missed the show, and I, I he wanted to know if you were doing it at eight a.m. every morning. So mm, I, yeah, I, I saw that. Him, yeah. Told him the schedule and to join in anytime. Unfortunately, when he did join in, I was out. Oh no. Mm. 
Um, reading down programmer jobs. Why am I doing that? I just sat down, so I'm, 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 I haven't gotten into anything yet. What are y'all talking about today? Well, Michael oh. is going through his setup of his open elect box and putting an MS. Oh, yeah. Right oh. Yes, 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 yes. So, I'm in the BIOS, and now I just wanted to check my... I lost the video on your... Yeah, yeah I know. Video. What the? Hang Hangouts is asking me some stupid questions anyway. There you are. All right, so I am going to go to... Um, does this look like yours, by the way? Yeah. Go back over to the, the main one. <clears throat> main. Uh, let's look a little bit right. And oh, no, you got a different. Yeah, you got a different board in yours. Uh, where's do I have any information here? Well, anyway, so under the setup configuration, ODD Gen 2 HCI mode, M setup port is enabled. Um, oh, SATA SSD, 8.5, so 8.50, so it's it's detecting the M SATA, that's good, and what are my boot options? Oh, when you put that uh, MS ATA, did you get a little bracket with some thermal paste? Because that sits right on top of your wireless card there. No, it doesn't. Uh, the wireless card's below it. Um, they're not on top of each other. And uh, also the Samsung SSDs have uh, uh, thermal throttling, so they will slow themselves down if the heat becomes an issue without degrading their uh, lifespan. So I've taken that into consideration. So let me just uh, the boot. Um, so, so. Mine, mine came with a little bracket and some thermal paste because, like, the... the the wireless card is below it, but it's like right below the MSATA slot. So, um, I didn't change anything, so quit without saving, and let me do a boot, and let me see if. What happens here if it actually boots up into Cherie son Eric is in the chat that's futures oh, hey okay. dude so watch it not work I've never tried the beta before I might have to go back and put on the other one but uh, seems like it may not be booting oh error in mount flash uh oh. Uh, okay. uh So let me see. Let me rewrite this uh, flash drive real quick with the 408 version. Oh well, yeah, perfect. Show us the insides of your house. <laughs> yeah. You know. All right. So <laughs> getting back to. Gonna get the version eight. So same process, just a different. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh gosh, I'm gonna take my pills. Uh oh. All right, so let's yeah, go with the stable version. This is one of the reasons why uh, you probably shouldn't use the betas. Um, they tend to have problems, but I wanted to check it out. So, yeah. Futures, uh, a question there. He said he's uh, set up Untangle Firewall twice now, and it's a pretty smooth install, and it runs off Debian, and definitely is. Um, can I ask what you... what? setup environment you did it? Was it for like a home user or a small business or major corporate network or uh, 
if you want to give out those details. <laughs> I'll to give out mine. I'm so sleepy today. I only have half a cup of coffee in front of me because that's. I, it took me a minute to realize I needed to put the cup under the the drip. <laughs> <laughs> see. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh man, just did that. Wow. <laughs> I can't say I haven't pushed the button before. I put the cup under there before. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, well, yeah, yeah, but this is something that. I'm, this is like the third or fourth time I've done it this month, I think. So I forgot to put a cake up in there and ended up making hot water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the oh, that can so go That's actually not a big dirt. deal because at least you get a little cleaning through the thing. Yeah, yeah. You're disappointed yeah. when you pick up your cup and you're half asleep and it's water instead of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's more like iced tea. Undertaker yeah. says. Uh, He's a smooth he's, wall. He's a smooth That's one wall. I haven't heard. Mm. Thanks, Undertaker. I'll check that one out. Mm. Done for an elementary school. Nice. Yeah. I've, <coughs> see, those those situations in Undertaker, this might have been why you haven't gone with uh, Untangle, is the free versions are good for, like, home users, basically. The other stuff that you can do with Untangle, you have to pay a subscription for, and I imagine futures that they went with the uh, subscription stuff to integrate with uh, Active Directory and such. I would imagine, would hope it would make it very nice for them. Um, but I haven't heard of Smoothwall, so I'm, I'm going to check into that one. Thanks for. Yeah, really, because yeah, that's we want to know that. That's something that I need to look into. All of this stuff. Is that what the show was on? Did you already do a show? Which one was the, on the on the Untangle? Uh, we haven't we haven't done an uh, actual show on them yet. Um, oh, okay, cool. I was just talking about. Okay, right. So I hadn't missed anything. Good. Yeah. So but the particular. That. It's the flash drive. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> is is Smoothwall just a? Uh, it looks like it's just a web filtering thing, or is it like a full internet gateway like these other ones are? You're right, the one I'm looking at is .com. .org will probably be a better one to look at. And what's causing me problems? So, okay, what have I done? I wonder what have I done. Where's that flash drive? Workable flash drive. Flash drive. I don't put those in. Well, Michael. What? Jeez, calm down, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Another flash drive. Where is my flash drives? Where did I put them all? What? And why don't I have one from? Why don't I have a um one from the show? Did I not get one? Did we give them all away? <laughs> I think I took one, did I? Anyway, really boring show. All right, so if I can't get open a like good, I maybe I'll just go to PF Sense. Um, I'll probably get that booted faster than I can open a look. Um. Um, futures that that side of it is like super super easy to integrate the uh, 
Active Directory stuff with Untangle, and it makes your report so much nicer. You get like a nice fine-tuned by user report or computer report. It's it's pretty sweet. I really liked it. Um, I had set it up for a small business that I worked with. We had about 50 some computers in the network and we had everything set up on Active Directory and then had it integrated with uh, Untangle and then the I think we had the premium one where we got the content filtering and all of that stuff. So that that was actually the main reason they wanted it was just to keep people off Facebook and stuff like that during the business day. Um, it, it was really, really easy to set up, though. So. I don't remember the specifics, or I would go into it. I, I want to say I think you just set up a administrative user to be able to talk to the Active Directory, and then it just pulls all of the usernames and then matches it up as they are signed in and stuff. Um, it is pretty nice because you can set up groups so that you can have one group not be content filtered. So, like, the bosses wanted everybody else not to be able to get to Facebook and social media, but they wanted to still be able to get to Facebook and social media, so I did have some uh, issues with that, but did it anyway, because that's what they asked. Wow, the Futures just gave us a whole lot of different ones. Indian, IP Cop, and Watch Card. Yay, dollar. Oh, I completely forgot. Um, the the Amazon crisis is over with. Uh, the server, the degraded hardware thing, I got that fixed. Sweet. Cool. It was just so, uh... Well, <laughs> yeah, I just had to clone it to a new, you know, AMI. Yeah. Yeah, uh, which I which I guess is confusing. Like I don't understand why they don't just do that for you. It's their hardware that's dying. Yeah. That's what that's what kind of confused me about what they were saying yeah. in that email is like we found that one of your hard drives is dying I'm like that's that's not our problem I know that's your hard drive <laughs> you're Amazon right yeah. we're paying you to do this <laughs> why yeah. do I have to go fix your issue yeah but okay whatever I mean I'm but we fixed it yeah, so and uh, in fact I um, while I was at it I upgraded the server oh here we go folks oh, sweet um, I upgraded the server actually significantly, um, and I was going to maybe merge the Crypto Prevent server and add the download server for that to this one as well. But it's like it's like significantly upgraded from what it was before. So, Sweet. I mean, not not too sitting Proctor price wise, but <laughs> <laughs> did you see the wheels turning? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also saw the bank account last night. Hmm. Okay, we had to fix that. We need some products. Let's do it. We uh, <laughs> we got that PayPal thing worked out too, and I gave uh, Proctor my credit so that he can do. Oh that yeah, stuff. I went to yeah I went to add him, and it asked me to verify the bank account number that doesn't exist anymore, and I don't even have it. I didn't feel like looking it up in the old records, so I just. Well, one of the ones that's on there is, is valid. It was at least the savings. Yes. Oh, that's the one I didn't try. I didn't try that one. Yeah. But anyway, whatever. Yeah. I just didn't have time too much time to mess with it, so. Which I haven't had this week. No worries. We got it. Um...
What is a good 128 gig flash drive that you guys, or that's good reads and write speeds? Uh, what do you guys usually use for your flash drives? Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking in uh, the school environment. Untangle would definitely help in those situations. Um, as far as those size flash drives, I I really don't have one. I don't really have a need for that size of a hard drive or flash drive. Um, most of mine are like just your generic cheap one gig ones. I have a couple four gig ones, and I have one 32 gig one that's just like one of those little micro ones, and I only got that because it's so tiny, but it's the largest of them all. Um, I really don't keep up on speeds that much. I know getting a USB 3 one would be the one that Michael would suggest. But yeah, I don't but know. There's if... also, there, there, there are specific ones out there, models that didn't tend to be uh, faster than others. Um, Do you have any specific ones that you know yeah, about? Let me... hey, Corsair, Corsair and Mushkin yeah, have some that are pretty fast, but you have to look at each individual model. They have different specs. Um... Um, another thing you could go for too, because those prices are actually coming down, is your micro SD cards. Um, just getting a good flash drive reader or a USB adapter for those. Like actually, in this uh, Hack Five Field Kit, I got this sweet micro SD card USB adapter and literally that's all it is you just pop your micro SD in there and you got a flash drive um, I would like that more than trying to buy a specific USB flash drive um, this one's only USB 2 though but I mean I think a 128 gig flash drive is down to like 40 bucks now on Amazon um, you can get 16 gig ones for 12 bucks, so you can get a few of those and then have different payloads and things on them. Um, yeah, the, wire cutter thinks, the wire cutter thinks that uh, the Sandus Extreme 32 gig USB 3 flash drive is the best one to get. Um, I'm not saying I agree with that, but I mean that you can see some benchmarks uh, on, from those links I was posting up there. Um, and they uh, give me an idea. This is this is actually a 512 meg one, and it still works. Oh, uh, Undertaker, you uh, these are all one gigs. That's a two gig. Um, these are ones that I just use for like quick data transfer. I mean, normally if I have to give someone a movie or uh, copy some data over somewhere. A gig is more than I really need. Otherwise, I just use like a external USB drive, which in that case, I would even suggest doing something like this. Uh, let's see if I can find it here real quick. So this is a USB 3 external hard drive, and what I did here was when I upgraded my SSD drive, I just took my 60 gig SSD drive, popped it in here. Now I have a rugged portable USB drive. So that was my concern with having USB drives in the past is having uh, to worry about them banging all the time and stuff like that and carrying them around in my bags. So SSD took care of that and now I have a USB drive that holds that. That's USB 3. I think this was like maybe 12 bucks. And then the drives you can get uh, uh, 256, I want to say, is like at $100 right now, right? Let's see. I mean, that would probably be almost better for your USB drives. Just getting 
Yeah, uh, 250 gig SSD drive is 100 bucks. You can get that USB external case for like 12 bucks. I ha I'm big a big fan. I just I pushed it already earlier today, but the uh, Samsung SSD 5, uh, 850 series is uh, very good for um, uh, more traditional SSD or more traditional uh, HCI environments. But there, every flash drive is moving and will be moving to the NVMe um, protocol. Um, it's a much uh, more efficient protocol, and it's actually better for data integrity too, moving information across the PCI Express bus and communicating directly with Flash. Um, it's uh, it, it, newer motherboards that have the M2 slots. The M2 is the successor to the MSATA slot effectively. Um, but if they have that, uh, they'll likely to support the NVMe, um, particularly uh, you only have pretty much two generations of boards that support that, the X99 and the new Z170s um, from Intel. So basically the, the most modern DDR4 equipped um, chips will have those, but if you are um, running that type of platform, I would highly suggest or recommend that um, you look for those because they basically take performance up to the, you know, five to six hundred megabyte a second level of, of a, you know, a, a SATA 3 Proctor, did uh, you SSD that and gets it up to uh, basically yeah. Yeah, two sure gigs a second Pretty sweet. Uh, for reads and one gig a second for writes. So, um, Definitely, if you're considering SSDs, I would urge you to consider that. Now, obviously, they have a price premium currently uh, because there's not many in the market, um, uh, but uh, I'll expect that to come down. But you definitely want to consider it if you have a newer platform. So That does look like a pretty sweet pocket SSD drive. Um, I like this one just because of the expandability options like same reason I would probably go with a micro SD card now is that you can swap them out so easily you're not stuck with one uh, quote unquote payload um, that's the one I have there that's thirteen dollars this is the other one we were talking about which actually can emulate uh, ISO boot drives Um, yeah, and futures, that's what I did is I actually, I, I didn't even get it from eBay. I think I caught a sale at like Office Depot or Office Max and just bought like five or ten, uh, I think it was ten, a ten pack of one gig USB drives because they were obviously not wanting to sell them anymore, so they went on sale. I got them. I only have like four or five of them left now, but that's what happens with USB drives. and. I didn't care about them that much, so. Um, I, I like going that route that I posted there with having an external hard drive enclosure because you can put SSD drives in those and they're just as good. Plus, you have the ability to swap them out, and you have a full SATA thing there, so you can actually like hook up hard drives to it. It's really nice, I think, in tech-wise because you can easily hook up to their drive to your laptop and scan it offline having one of those so uh, how many things have you booted off that Zalman Proctor? Uh, just a couple did you go through and set up the easy to boot thing on it too? I think he did that's what I did. It's I have that Zalman set up with easy to boot. So if the system can't boot off the virtual ISO drive, I can use it'll boot off the easy to boot uh, version of loading ISOs and stuff. So they all use the same underscore ISO folder, so it made it really easy to set it up like that. Yeah, sweet. Good conversations this morning. Michael, how's your setup going? Um, still getting the flash error on the boot up. So I'm booting to the, the flash drive, and it gives me the open elect installation screen. But beyond that, it says account mounted. So I'm apparently this is an issue with the, the 
the boot media. So uh, I'm not clear what's going on. Um, either that or it just hates my SSD somehow. Um, but give me a second. I'm looking. Oh, they actually have an upgraded version of that original one. Um, the original S or external HDD enclosure. Um, that one is only two bucks more, and it's optimized for SSD and uh, support of SATA3. So, and I mean, like, I think SSD drives are going to be so commonplace, especially with how fast they're growing in size versus price. People are going to get smaller ones first, and then want to upgrade to larger ones later. And then they'll be like, oh, I don't even want that 60 gig drive anymore. I don't want that 120 gig drive anymore. So I think SSD drives are going to become like one gig flash drives sooner than later. Oh, I have a, do you believe I have a theory about what I'm doing wrong? And it's so weird. It might actually, hmm. might actually find it interesting. Um, so it appears as if, well, let me prove it first. I don't want to say anything if this not, doesn't actually fix it. I, I do want to note on the PFSense setup, like it is actually pretty easy to install and have working right away. Um, the default install is already set up for internet usage. So like it's, it's already set up, it's configuring the additional packages that it comes complex. Like if you want to set up squid and uh, ad blocking and VPN connectors and things like that. I don't think it's just so much complex, really. It's just a lot that you have to educate yourself on so that you don't add security holes to your firewall instead of improving it. No, that didn't do it. He said to use the... HP USB disk storage format tool. Oh, you, you, really? Is that was his advice for me? You you mean that old school what Windows ninety five tool or whatever it was to create USB disks? Um, um, there's actually another one if you haven't heard of it that I think is actually a little bit nicer. I found because of the Raspberry Pi. Uh huh. Uh, SD formatter. Post a link to it in here. Like I've used that HP USB disk formatter thing, but I, th I think this one's actually a little bit nicer because that's what everybody on Raspberry Pi does to format their SD cards. I guess maybe that is only for SD cards, not USB drives. I didn't think of that. Hmm. Plug in my USB drive and see if I can use it. Shoot, why not? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so you can use that for USB drives as well. Really? Yeah, the SD formatter. All right. Well, actually, I'm gonna <laughs> let's see because I'm, I'm having a heck of a time with this, and I don't know what's going on here. I did the same process on this computer with that hard drive, and it was running. I mean, it is running. Uh, if I hook the hard drive back up, it will run um, open like just fine. I guess I'll eventually have to do that if I can't get this working. But <sighs> and Phoenix PC repair suggests the RM Prep USB. He thinks it's better than the HP format tool. Um, Phoenix PC, have you tried that SD formatter? Later, Undertaker. Have a great week. Hmm. 
Hmm. Gosh, their page is really complex for that RM prep tool. Yeah, it's pretty busy. They got a whole lot of ads on there that does not improve my. Yeah. Ideas. Yeah. Oh, it's it's got a lot of uh, a lot of options though. That looks cool. I like the SD formatter because it's just so simple and quick. And I did just run it on my SD card or my USB card and it, or USB drive. Blah 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 blah. And it well, I'm great. I'm installing it now, so I'll let you know. Yeah, that is a downside that it has to be installed. Yeah, I kind of like the W32 and 32 disk formatter because that I mean that's basically wiping the drive as well. So I I, I think it may just be your your media might be bad. I've tried three different flash drives. Oh, it's not a media. Um, I'll find it. You might need some thermal paste for that MSATA. It's. <laughs> I told you. We already talked about that issue. Okay, so SD formatters here. You might need to reformat your computer. <laughs> Phoenix PC Repair does use the, or has tried and uses the SD card formatter. He prefers the RM USB prep tool, I'm assuming. RM pre USB. Okay, so it formats the flat uh, fat thirty two, and then now let me try my disk imager. Did you check the hash of your your download? No. Your download might be corrupted. Are you serious? I mean, that's why all of these downloads say check the hash. Oh, geez. Right. When have you ever downloaded something and then not matched the hash? It's only for in, it's only for infected downloads. It's not because the download's not working. It's because they, you know, somebody could hijack the page or something like that and put a a, a it's link. For to a, corrupted, a it's for corrupted downloads as well. If it's corrupted, it's not going to match the hash. Well, I understand that, but when does that ever happen in your experience? When has that ever happened? Short of like oh, completely cutting your internet connection wire in the middle of the download or something. I mean, as far as downloads and USB images work, they all work for me. So. All right, and can you just just to just to verify, can you um, use Win32 Disk Imager to write um, to write Open Elect to a flash drive and boot your mini box with it? What? No, it's running my internet right now. Oh, it's going to be an issue then. All right, well, I use that formatter. It is a nice formatter, though. I will will say that. The SD format or the RM pre USB? The SD format, which is what I ended up using. So I have seven. Pick my flash drive. See if this works better. <laughs> it's taken out. Iron Mount Flash. Oh. Okay, so what I'm going to do is reconnect the hard drive. We will do the traditional way.
do, do, do. So, I am booting my open elect box, just powered it on. This is what you normally should say. And I don't know if you're counting folks, but coming up on maybe six, five, six seconds here, and we should have it. There we go. It's definitely less than 10 second boot up, um, and we have access to, notice those movies at the top, these are my movie collection. And I have a remote, which, I don't know if you can see it all, but there was my remote. It's an old um, Media Center Edition remote, and it works, let's see if you can see this. It works very, very nicely, very fluid interface. Um, as you can see, i um, got some movies. I'm not going to show these because... Oh, the last Lovecraft. Big Lovecraft fan. But anyway, this is what I wanted to get up and running here, and this is what I wanted to show you guys. Now, I don't... i got to do a little bit more research, apparently, under wh or why uh, it's having an issue booting. Uh, but uh, what I did to install this was originally... Um, did the same process. I burnt it to a, or not burnt it, but I uh, wrote it to a USB, bootable USB flash drive, um, and then I stuck it in the USB port. I actually have a hub connected to it. I don't know if you can see the hub, but it's there. And um, and booted to it, and then just ran the installation, which took all of you know about ten minutes total from beginning to end, and uh, then was able to boot directly uh, from the hard drive. Uh, during the installation process, you can choose to install it onto media, but it, has, it can be booted to in a, in a live manner as well. So um, this is what I was hoping we could have shown you from the beginning with the SSD I got for it, but looks like that's going to take some more work. Um, now note that the SSD is still attached, so I'm not really clear why installer wasn't uh, working. If anybody has some recommendations on that, please let me know. It's were you, probably just my were you ignorance, booting to the right drive? What's that? Were you booting to the USB drive? Yeah, I mean, I even did the, uh, the F7 BBS pop-up, you know, uh, and, and manually selected it. And there's, I don't know if you guys are aware, but in modern BIOSes, there's usually a UA, EFI way to boot the flash drive as well as the um, legacy method of booting it. Um, but uh, the EFI is supported by um, uh, OpenELEC, so honestly, it shouldn't happen. Um, it shouldn't matter how you boot from it like that. And I tried both ways and uh, did not work. The only other thing I can think of is that version. I originally started out with a version prior to 508, and you know they get updated. Um, as, you know, it gets automatically updated as the updates are released. So. It's possible that one of those updates that they put out since broke it on my box in some way. Uh, I don't know. But just to give you an idea, um, videos, add-ons. This is what we were talking about the other day. It's the Genesis. Um, but just to give you an idea of the uh, large screen experience that it can it can bring you. It's really nice, um, and it's very, very, very simple, as you can see, with a remote to, um, uh, to do. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and so that's OpenELEC, and like I said, it's a Linux distribution, but it boots... You know, this is the shell, effectively, uh, is, is, is Cody. And if you want to look, let's see what else. System info. Just to give you an idea of um, the hardware uh, I'm running on. So it's a Celeron N2930 quad core, no hyperthreading, just four individual cores, four gig um, DDR3 uh, low uh, memory, um, 1.35 volt, 
uh, RAM in there and two and a half inch hard drive and the CPU is not doing anything right now so it's not running at its max speed. What's your uh, specs on yours, um, Brantley? Um, I think it's a uh, two gigahertz quad mm -hmm. core Celeron. Okay, so pretty similar. Uh, is it uh, active cooled or passive? Uh, passive. Nice. The whole whole case itself is a, a big heat sink. It looks like. Yeah, effectively this is too on this board. Uh, so if I was able to show you, um, remember how I said the CPU is on the flip side of that board? Well, the reason for that is because it's yeah, it's pretty much using the case as a heatsink. Um, I like that. I think that's fine, and it and it certainly seems to work. Um, the video is the built-in Intel. Um, it's actually fairly well supported by Linux now, so it's not so bad. Um, and I'd probably prefer some dedicated hardware there, um, but you can't uh, have everything in these small boxes, and uh, you know, if you are going for a gaming computer, they're probably a little bit underpowered for that, um, but certainly no issue with decoding HD type movies. Um, yeah, this is to, uh, to give you an idea, the operating system, as you can see, uh, fully installed, even with some uh, additional stuff, um, it's 230 megs, um, I've got that. Can yours take more than 4 gigs of RAM, or is it maxed out? It's, uh, it's maxed out, I can't do more than 4, as far as I know. Yeah, mine will go up to 8. Yeah, yeah, you got a slightly newer version, I believe, or a better version than I was able to get. Um, the actual 4 gig limitation is a specific limitation of uh, the chip. Uh, so the same improvements, you know, your 2 gigahertz, whatever, all that, um, that probably was fixed with that, or that uh, was working with that. Anyway, um, Well, excellent show. No, <laughs> it was horrible as usual. But um, anyway, suggestions. I really would love some feedback on what you guys think that Mount Flash issue is because it's driving me crazy. And if anybody wants to share, uh, I would love to hear what your thoughts on that are. Oh, here I found a link that might help you. Uh, I've been looking. A lot of them are pie related. Um, let me see what you got. What you found? Um, hold up, so I can copy and paste it. What was the error? Um, so error in mount underscore flash. Later futures. We'll probably be off by the time you get back, I assume. It's past our hour time limit already. So thanks for joining us thank, today. Thank you, definitely. Yeah, we appreciate the participation from both uh, you and Phoenix, uh, Undertaker, all you guys were talking a lot today. We appreciate that as usual. Uh, and thanks for the other options on uh, Firewalls. I'll definitely check into those. Thank all the good those. links and yeah, I mean that's uh, all good info, and that's what we like to share here. It's just good information that maybe one tech knows and the other tech doesn't. That's what we, we want all techs to be great out there. So, Michael, what was the error you were getting? Error in mount underscore flash. Have you tried this one yet? <laughs> okay. You just... Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yes, I, I, I have. I have. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, do, do you that's the page I have. That's the exact page I have open, in fact. Um, now, if you would look at those links, you'll see that they all relate to Raspberry Pis. So maybe it's something related. What are they saying? Um, various stuff that hasn't been working, frankly. Um, like they want you to stick this text file in the root of the SD card, but I mean, none of that applies to me. That does apply. Just stick it in the root of the USB drive. No, but this is for mm, this is for specifically for their hardware. They're addressing the hardware that's in the Raspberry Pi, the line that they're adding. So it's and plus, it's suppo- this problem is supposed to have been fixed in a in a recent build of it, so it shouldn't even be happening anymore. Mm. But um, but this is going to kill me. I need to figure this out. You may need to update your BIOS. Oh, that's going to be hard because I don't think they. They they deprecated the machine. When was the okay. last time you updated the BIOS? Mm, when I got it. Uh, one of the links says that you cannot install Open Elect on UEFI mode. You have to use Legacy mode. But I know you uh, tried both. I think. Yeah, I, I tried both, so I I don't know. Um, maybe. And I've got it running through a USB 2 hub. I don't think that that's a problem. Maybe it is. Why don't you plug it directly in? Possibly. Yeah, I just... Hmm, yeah, that's a good point. Let me try that. I thought I'd install this the other way, but whatever. Um, do, 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 do. Where's my... Oh, that's right. It does support a mouse, doesn't it? Plugged in directly. Okay, now we're gonna power it on. Pop up F7 mode. F7 mode. Oh. And who decided? Who got to sit around and decide F7 is gonna be the key to bring up the boot menu? Who who did that? Who sat around and did that? Some guy named Steve. Hmm. So I'm doing the legacy boot this time. Wait a second. Is it working? Holy shit, it's working. Run straight to it, not going to a hub. Yep. Holy shit. Okay, folks. So, let's... Legacy, um, is it in legacy mode or UEFI? Uh, I I think it would work in either. I did legacy just to be sure. But, um, so... Good golly. This took way too long to figure out. And I'm so sorry, guys, for, for the delay in that. But USB hubs apparently are bad to boot from. Yay, we figured out. And um, I'm going to get this uh, camera up here again so I can show you guys this process. Um, Where is...
Hold on, guys. One second. There's the show hangout. Um, we're going to do... Did you guys just... Oh, you're back. Hey, we see Michael's face. Hey! Oh. Was... Oh. <laughs> there it is still. <laughs> Close up, but nonetheless. Yeah. Perfect for facial recognition. Dude, you shaved your beard. How even more identifiable you are. Why can't I do this? <laughs> NSA, go, go, go! <laughs> <sighs> Alright, so we're back. Um, anyway, this is the text-based installation of the new OpenELEC. Um, so we're going to do a quick install, the first option. Oh, and look, there's my um, Samsung SSD. Beautiful. If you want to get a target, it's just wiped out. Oh, hell yes, let's wipe that out. It's the last chance if you want to continue. Yes, okay. So the idea is that um, it wipes your disk, so be careful of that. Now, as you can see, the installation is actually complete. <laughs> so I know that seems... Uh, very odd, but that's how fast it went. And literally, that was less than one minute actual installation. So I'm going to do a reboot and remove the the boot. Um, so let's see it start up for the first time. Here we go. Uh, I don't know if you guys could tell. That's the new Cody. Okay, so that's a full boot. That was like four seconds. Here's so... Hmm? Your thumb or fingers in the camera. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that was like incredibly fast, and that's just what I want to give you. This is like an instant on box, even from a cold boot state. That's the major thing I want to impress upon everyone. And um, actually, this wizard is a little bit new. I didn't see this in the previous one. Um, what happened? Just knock me out. Oh, because I hit the wrong button, probably. Okay, hold on, I'll be back very shortly. Okay. Are we? Can we see that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Is there some sort of mute on here? Or... I muted it. Oh, you just unmuted yourself. I I got it. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um. So anyway. Um. Next. Um. We're gonna be called Open Neck. Oh, this is much nicer than the original one. You had to go and manually configure all this stuff. So. Uh, we're going to do, oops, that's not what I need to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just so easy to set up. It auto-detects everything. Uh, the hardware in these boxes are pretty generic. Realtek, Gigabit Ethernet, um, Realtek Audio, um, you know, Intel CPU and Intel Graphics. Uh, it's all well-supported under Linux. Um, so, uh... As you can see, the default password is open, like and root. I actually like to have SSH turned on. Um, and that's it. And that's it. Now, what I typically would do at this point with Cody is I would go to... Um, um,
So I'm going to add videos. And we're going to call it uh, movies. Uh, or I'm going to call it movies. And then we're going to attach to this location um, we're going to, as you can see, we're going to add additional sources here. So we'll, or actually browse. Um, so we'll go to Windows. Oh, there's my work group. Actually, hold on. Why don't I see... Oh, because I probably have to reboot. Uh, so, um, what is my box going to be? Um, oops, if I could spell. But anyway, you basically add a movie source and point it to a network share location where your movies are. And it's pretty easy to do. Um, I just don't think it's detecting my... Uh, I'm going to reboot it and see what happens. Again, very quick boot up, very quick boot up. Let me just go ahead and check the settings too, just to make sure I'm not... Um, uh, virtually no settings have to be changed, but I haven't actually looked through here on the um, most recent one. Oops. Ah, video fine, looks good. Okay, oh, there we go. Hmm. Yeah, very, very nice options for controlling virtually everything. Having a keyboard and mouse connected is a big advantage. Come on, give me some love here. Is Nama not in the right work group? Is that the reason? Does Windows 10 not have the work groups like that? Is that the reason? Because I haven't done this since I changed to Windows 10. Hmm. 
Nerd. So let's see. Why can't I see my box? Um, huh. When I set it up, that's what I was saying. I had to go through and uh, type in my box directly to browse to it. Oh, okay. So maybe I do have to do that. Let me just check. I, I was used to browse into it. Let me just make sure where I've got everything located here. Um, so it's funny because this worked just sharing when I when I did it in the older version, this is of course the um, the beta version six of Open Elect, but when I did it with version five oh eight, the recent most recent stable version, um, I did not have that issue. Um, and I've noticed this is typically and 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 this is kind of common of them. Again, the the main releases don't have any problems. The uh, the beta releases they typically do, and one of the last things they typically fix is the um, SMB related stuff. Um, so when I was beta testing version five, as I was on it before version five, so when I was base, uh, beta testing Open Elect version five, I noted that uh, during that process I had trouble, tr uh, trouble, 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 trouble with the SMB and then all of a sudden with an update it, it, it immediately started working. So I just wanted to uh, mention that to everyone and um, that's not terribly uncommon. Uh, I imagine that if I had, um, if I quickly burnt um, uh, another one that uh, you know the the four or the 508 version rather that it would work just fine. Um, so I guess I have to manually do these shares in it. Um, what a poopy pain! But um, I go ahead and do that. But it, it, essentially, though, I, 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 what I want to impress is, is I think hopefully I've already impressed you. It, once you find your media, wherever your media might be shared on your network, you just point it to that location. It indexes it all for you and gives you a nice list with with the graphics for all the the you know even if you didn't do anything to download pictures of your your movies or if you just have files dumped in a folder it will take care of uh, it'll scrape all that information together from wherever it can online and display it um, perfectly actually for you so I never have to do anything with my media library as far as making sure uh, uh, the information is accurate, or or the pictures are there, or anything like that. That's all taken care of me by Open Elect, and so I'm a pretty good fan. Uh, Open Elect also, also integrates. I don't know if you can see here, but it integrates with HG Home Run, so uh, it can integrate with uh, TV uh, streaming hardware and software. So that's kind of cool, but. It's really been um, the first device um, that I've used that, um, you know, uh, other than a dedicated device like, like let's say, a Blu-ray player or something, it's been the first device which is, you know, instant on, instant access, and it's a second thought that it's actually a computer powering it all. And I had that experience with Open Elect, and so that was my first real um, big screen experience um, personally. I've seen it done a lot of other times, but it's uh, it's been very nice to me, and it's fairly simple to set up. And again, if I wasn't using the beta, I'd probably be able to browse those shares uh, straight from the get-go. Um, I'm hoping for version 6 coming out in the very near future, because they typically only have about 5 or 6 um, beta releases, uh, and so they're already at that point with version 6. I'm hoping the next release will be the final uh, on that. And... So I'm glad I at least got to show you guys a little bit of that uh, today in the show and um, encourage you to, to test it out and to build your own mini computers um, and get those going. Just um, FYI, if you want to boot uh, to a flash deck, um, try to avoid hubs, or at least on my system it did not like them. And um, uh, you know the hub I use for make it easy access for the keyboard and mouse and um, the infrared receiver and some of the things that I have attached to it, uh, but um, they're not really necessary for the day-to-day -day operation of it. I don't need to have the hub anyway. Um, you guys want to wrap it up there, or is there anything else? Uh, I didn't really talk about any tickets today. 
Um, I don't think we have there anything. There are a lot of them. There always are. There always are. But no, no, today uh, was actually a pretty heavy day. Oh, good, good, good. We had the last couple. Excellent. Well, that's uh, that's good. Sometimes we have busy days just because uh, a lot of people purchased on a you know around a similar period of time. A certain day, yeah. Yeah, but uh, oh wow, yeah, Oof, lots of tickets. Yeah, I gotta get started on that. Yeah, I've been through a lot today. Okay. Um, any common issues or anything? I always uh, th remember that's always good stuff to bring up during the show. No, the ones I've done so far, uh, the only actual one that I've done that was a customer issue, not a sales or a payment, was a uh, a guy lost his product key for crypto prevent. I found it for him. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of those recently. Uh, I try to help those uh, those people out, and I just want to make a general statement to our our. Uh, customers out there uh, with Crypto Prevent. Uh, yeah, it's very important like any other piece of software when you purchase it to maintain your product key uh, and preferably in more than one place. Um, I actually, just... I keep all my product keys for software I've purchased. I'll keep all of them on a little flash drive. Okay, well, there there, there you go. Um, but just something, um, basically, two places uh, printed out, maybe, you know, hard copy as well. Um, because that's really ownership of, of that. Um, it would be uh, sort of like, uh, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but, but basically it's, it, it entitles you to that product. And we have sales records and we have emails and, and all sorts of things, but, you know, after a couple of years goes by, it's... Receipt usually. Yeah. After a couple of years goes by, though, we may not have immediate access to some of those uh, to some of that information. If you have the product key, you can always reinstall the software, and there never has to be a um, and even a, a discussion about um, uh, you know uh, who you are, or proven uh, you know purchase pro pro proving that you purchased it. So. Um, please keep those pieces of information um, as uh, close at hand and, and, and consider them to be valuable. Um, the software itself can, you know, as you know, computers can be destroyed, computers can be reformatted, wiped, reloaded, whatever. Um, and those are all going to be cases where the software gets erased. I mean, it, it, there's no, f it, it's not physical. I mean, people have, need to understand that software is, 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 is more abstract than physical. And um, when you're have ownership of something, uh, you should consider that product key probably to be the physical portion of that item. And you don't throw that away unless you don't ever want to use that item again. And you don't ever lose it just like you might or shouldn't probably ever lose your house key uh, or car key. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, we will always do our best to try to locate your product keys if we have access to those records, but we can't keep indefinite uh, records going back um, you know, from the beginning of time. So, uh, if at all possible, please, please try to keep track of those. Um. Guess, guess what I named my internet gateway. What did you name your internet gateway? Gateway drug. It's kind of cute. Um. <clears throat> Um, so I guess with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, end the show. Please, uh, if you want to uh, join us, um, if you didn't catch the show today, you can always go to foolishit.com slash live, and there's a link there uh, for our previous shows you can watch. You can also see our previous shows on um, Nick's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash disk operating system. Um, thank everybody for participating in the chats today. Um, particularly Phoenix, Undertaker, um, Futures, and was that it? Yep. Yeah, I guess that was it. Um, and thank you all for sharing the good and useful information. I think it was a, a pretty good show. Sorry about the slowness in it, but you know we're all techs, and um, if you guys ever run across a similar issue, um, you might know what to do now. So, I don't know. I guess that cuts it out. Um, we'll see you all back here tomorrow for our Wednesday show. The Wednesday show uh, is at... When's the Wednesday show? At noon? 2 p.m. 2. 2. 2 p.m. So uh, join us there around that time. And um, yeah. Um, laters, folks. Bye, Later. Internet.